Um, chiefly, I'm looking after a chunk of dispatches. We do about 40 a year. Um, and we commission in a, a slightly different way to, to others in that we have, uh, at the moment, four companies who provide a certain percentage of our output of those 40 films, but we commission outside of that as well. Um, and we're looking for journalistic, um, hard-hitting, high-impact, high-rating um, ideas to, um, to, to put in the dispatches strand. Um, and I can elaborate more. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm head of uh, factual entertainment commissioning at Sky, and we also fa have factual, but we're in the process of restructure, bringing them uh, together because there's an overlap uh, in certain <clears throat> areas. But what I can tell you, the, the tone and needs uh, apply across both of them. So there's Sky One, which we sort of like to think of as family viewing. Sky Living, which is more about relationships. They could be working relationships, you know, family relationships, whatever. Um, Sky Atlantic is harder for us to crack because really people look at Sky Atlantic and they want their Mad Men's and their Game of Thrones and whatever. It's more acquisition. Really but I would say with Sky Arts, it's it's about popular. It's almost Radio 2. It's, you know, do you, when you hear the name, do you know it? It's not going to be the same as BBC 4, and I think it's marked out quite a different um, uh, tone for it. Um, but it does take risks, and it does experiment. So it's had, had wonderful um, things like The Playhouse, which are short uh, uh, dramas, and it's attracted <laughs> people like John Hamm, Daniel Radcliffe, Judy Dench. I mean, it's incredible of getting the talent to come for just half hour uh, dramas. And they waited a long time till they had all the talent lined up, rather than sometimes you commission something that's about talent, but in fact there's only two names and then the rest are sort of almost unknown. So it was quite, they waited, and, and I think that's what Sky will do across the channels. They'll take a, they'll, they'll support a, an, an ambitious uh, proposal because people are paying for box sets, so they don't really want to turn it on and see something they can get on Freeview. Um, so. <clears throat> good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I work for Al Jazeera English. I'm a commissioning producer in the programs department. Uh, very briefly, Al Jazeera, if you watch it, which I hope you do, is a global news and current affairs channel um, and one of a number of channels in the Al Jazeera network. Of the English Channel's output, roughly about 60% is in any given week is news, um, and 40% will be programming, and within the programming there are a number of different strands, some of which are done out of Doha and some of which are done out of London. Uh, Witness, the strand I commissioned for, is an observ observational documentary strand. We have two slots a week, uh, uh, 25 minutes and a 48-minute um, slot. And um, we look at the big issues of the day. We are not a news-led strand, but we do look at the big issues of the day through the medium of an individual's story. So our films are always a first-person um, human interest story. So I'm Liz McIntyre. I head up production and development for Factual for Discovery Networks International. So we had a couple of examples of UK um, audiences and global audiences. So. I commission for DNI, Discovery Networks International. That means that it's masters, one asset or series that plays around the world in over 200 countries, translated into 45 languages, up to 2 billion cumulative subscribers who will see that one asset. So it's very much about a different way of thinking. How can I think of either a character-led series or a process-driven format, which I'll talk a little bit about what that means in a moment. How can I have one master that plays internationally, including in the UK? So the two key types of programming is you may or may not have heard of Ed Stafford, Naked and Marooned. So this is a key program, uh, or key commission for me, where I have a talent, Ed Stafford, who he is an expert in his field. He understands survival. He's ex-military. So he's imparting knowledge about survival, but still learning. He had an, a burning ambition to go and see whether he could survive Starkers for 60 days on a desert island. So there's a skin of an, a real life experiment around what he's doing. Can he really survive with nothing, with no one else there filming himself? It, it's known as having local touch points. So anywhere in the world you think, oh look, there's a Polish scientist, jolly good, I'm, I'm going to look out for him during this series, and so on. 
and also should a individual country of our 220 countries where this plays, if they wish to create, deconstruct that kit part program for themselves, they can green screen their own full set of Polish experts in Polish and they have a local customized version if they don't want to translate the international master. So those are two key types of programming in the specialist factual genre that I look for. That's me. Thank you very much. There is no obst obstacle at all to emailing us directly or um, emailing the, the, the companies that, you know, that there's, I mean, there are the four companies that do the out, have the output deals with us, and there are, there are then another probably half dozen companies that we deal with on a very regular basis, because it's quite, a, I mean, current affairs is a fairly specialist field. Um, but what I also would say to people is that if you normally work um, or, or pitch or think of ideas in, you know, the, the specialist factual genre or even entertainment or whatever else um, you work on, you do come across current affairs ideas and, you know, don't sort of think, oh, well, that's not in my general sphere of, of what I normally do. Um, I won't do anything with that. You know, send it to us. And even if you don't end up working on it, um, you know, the company, you, you could, well, you might not want to, that's what I'm saying, you might not want to, but you might get a production fee from it, part of the production fee from, from, a, from a company. That's a bonus. So, you know, I mean, because there are people, and I think that's something that people um, don't do for us, actually, is when they come across something they think is a little news story, um, you know, send it in. There's, there might be something in it for you. It's not, it's, it's not something just to ignore. But in terms of people you know, who want to work on current affairs um, uh, programs, um, absolutely pitch to us, pitch to the companies, um, the more the, the better. And, and you know, we try to write back to you and say why it is that we might not want it or encourage you if we do want it and, and push you towards a company who can help you to, to work it out. I don't know if anyone else wants to quickly add to that. Actually, I was just going to add to Tom's point is also don't think that things are going into a, a black hole because um, I know there's a, a laugh when you said send the idea, but actually you're starting a relationship and you will begin to identify someone who is good at bringing in ideas yeah. and I will, even if you don't work on that programme and there's another way of cutting the cake, but also you're starting to um, show yourself as to, be, to being a smart person with good ideas. Exactly. Yeah. Every day to discuss ideas. M Michelle, do you like to um, it's It's so important to think about the channel or the commissioner you're coming to both of those things actually because a very good idea brought to the wrong uh, commissioner makes the commissioner feel that actually you're not you're just taking a shopping list and and I've had a you know quite a few um, interesting experiences I, I I sat with someone once pitching me a big a big fact dense series and it was about a very serious subject it was about female genital mutilation and it was really hard to have the conversation because on the one hand, it was totally bizarre, and, and it's a subject that should be dealt with. But in, in what way would you say that was um, factual entertainment? So it then became a sort of conversation of, do you think I'm someone else? Uh, and, and, and they didn't, but it was because they had, you know, three ideas to sell. It was like, well, you're there, we'll try it on you. And, and, and it was, and so all I, and, and actually, I remember what it's like going off to pitch an idea to a controller and your tongue sticking to the roof of your mouth before you go in and they're running an hour late or whatever it is. And you do think there's a sort of magic, you know, rocket science to it. And do you know what? It's keep it simple. It's, you know, can you write the billing for the idea? Because if you can, when it goes on to saying um, in a five pages long, if you just write the billing so you get someone curious. Because if you get someone curious, They'll ask all the questions to bring out the rest. I think I think that that's really really important. And you know, viewers read billings every day, so that's all you have to do. What is in a nutshell? What is, what is this idea about? And if if you can imagine, it it shouldn't feel it's a BBC Four or it's an ITV Two. And sometimes people send ideas in and they've forgotten to change the um, the channel <laughs> on um, and I, mean, I know why it happens I've been out there in the indie world I understand it happens but just try not to uh, or try and rewrite the intro so it feels it's it's for you know my channel 
Um, and it's okay that you're flogging it everywhere. You're, people are trying to make a living, and, and that's, I think everyone recognizes that. But at least just, you know, if it's turned down by one channel, just try and think, well, how would I make that? What's the talent I'd put on it? Or how do I tweak it more to make it right for whoever I'm bringing it to next? But um, I, would, um, I would say the same in terms of the billing or the EPG, which is uh, all the viewer has to go on to decide whether they're going to watch this or not. And if you can't explain your idea in the 150 characters, including spaces, <laughs> the she needs. Don't forget the spaces, very important. <laughs> it's almost like a reverse process. You have to do your research. You have to have done quite a lot of work before you approach a commissioner. But what you approach them with is a very, very succinctly <coughs> and shortly written synopsis. And we actually ask for a maximum, an absolute maximum of 400 words. Um, in a synopsis. We've actually we've drawn up a special document to try and make people do this. Um, this is because um, it's for a number of things. One is that um, you can show, if, if you send an idea in and then your email back and said come in and see us and talk about it, the commissioner is interested in that idea. There is something there that they think is going to work for their particular slots, but they will assume that you have also looked at before you sent it in issues of access to your characters, how a, a, an idea, not confirmed, film it, and where you're going to film it, a rough idea of the budget, so that when you do come in and talk further, these things don't have to be set in stone, but they, they are things that will be discussed at various points, and you have to have got your heads around, if you're going to be given a commission, exactly how are you going to do this? Um, including in the very practical produce, production aspects of it, as well as the, the narrative within your, within your story. Uh, seeing footage or seeing clips or seeing some, something of, uh, to bring your idea to life visually is always great. We do understand that it's not always possible to do that. Um, if the idea is still strong enough, and then we can have discussions with people about how some development footage might be filmed. Um, Al Jazeera often well, doesn't usually give development funding. It depends very much on the idea. We don't do it very often, but there are other ways to get together enough money to go and shoot some very rough footage, which is not intended to be part of the finished film. It's intended to give us an idea. Well, in my case, it's intended to give me an idea of what this person looks like on camera and how they speak, and whether they're going to be strong enough to carry a whole film by themselves, so, you know, carry a film with them, them and their story at the center of it. A very succinctly well-written story, um, like Liz said, kind of an ability, if you do talk to a commissioner, to talk through all the many very facets. And also to begin to see, the purpose of that kind of conversation is to begin to see how the idea is going to mutate. You know, quite often the thing that uh, commissioners start talking about is not what ends up on television. It's, it, it kind of goes off in a di different direction. It's a very organic process. But you have to kind of have thought all of this through and be confident and happy enough to present it and also to stand your ground, <laughs> you know. As you, you know, we, we, want, we, want, yeah. we want a conversation. I mean, I think that's yeah. another thing that's really important is, yeah. is um, in a way, strategically, I, we can help you shape your idea because we know exactly behind the scenes what the exact strategy of that day is or of that week is. Um, so we can do that bit for you, but we, we like a conversation. We don't want it to be one-sided. And, you know, it's your idea, it's your story. You, you know more about it than I will at the beginning. And we are, you know, we, we have latitude. I think most commissioners have latitude within their slot to do individual documentaries in a slightly different way. What those ways will be will depend on the idea, on the people and everything else. But there is a latitude there to, to, to accept things which are slightly different. And so when you come and talk to a commissioner, what you're doing is, is kind of beginning a conversation about all of these things. Um, I, I, I very much agree. I, I, I can't think of any ideas that just came in, you know, mm. first submission, piece of paper, oh, that's it. It is always the beginning because it has to, to uh, be go into it in so much detail. Um, I, I would say in terms of tips, don't come with a list. Um, a long list and people often do that and then you have if you have an hour with someone you have 50 minutes of just one and one after another <laughs> and and then often it's the way out the door that they'll say something that you suddenly know oh, that's interesting um, and actually prune that list because there's a sort of glaze over I mean I had someone who came in to see me this week who and this is why I would say never be daunted or think you're not experienced enough or anything I had someone who came in who's 
a very good track record as a program maker, really, really good track record of big, ambitious projects. And, when, and I said, you know, what is it? And they went, um, well, we have a few things hanging around. <laughs> and and like, I felt so special. <laughs> it was like he's taken them out of the outing. And this person is a good program maker. But what he hadn't really thought about was was a picture to sell and actually bluntly that's what it is yeah. so you might come in thinking well it's having a casual chat if you've waited six weeks to get an hour a half hour with the commissioner you come in and and you can say and don't cling at every word because sometimes you can say well it could have water on it and people go yes it should have water on it. it's a brilliant yeah. idea yeah. and actually every word out of our mouth isn't a gem you know it's about a discussion and if you think water would ruin it as Liz said sit you know stand there and say no why it shouldn't be water because actually maybe with it should be on another channel but just because you think if you feel that people as I said before understand everyone's got to sell we've all had to do it that's what you know to, to make a living but there's there's something as a commission the hardest thing I learned was people coming in who I knew were really good filmmakers or had a really good track record trying to sell me something that I knew they didn't believe in, but that they'd been sent in by their indie or it was on a list and they wanted to sell it. And, you know, I'd much rather that there was sort of a bit of, you know, honesty about about trying to make something that you want to make or or believe has um, has a real uniqueness about it. I mean, I'm, I'm looking for scale and ambition a lot of the time. As I said, with Sky, you need impact. Um, and a different way of storytelling. And, and never be afraid for it to be too ridiculous, too off the wall, too mad. Because actually, safe and bland, and it was done this way last time, is the last thing you want to hear. So don't be afraid of, you know. One thing I would never want to hear, although given what I do, it's probably never <laughs> going to happen to me, but the one thing I would never want to hear is like, this is like my big fat gypsy wedding, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not interested in doing something that, that is like something that another channel has, has you know, had a huge success with. Um, we're not looking, well, at Al Jazeera, we're not looking for that. We're looking for a strong story. It may resemble another strong story, or it may be entirely different, but you don't have to sell your pitch as, it's like this thing that did well, mm. but a little bit different, because sometimes that works, sometimes it's just not going to work at all. And, and I would say that also, because we're also, remember, we, you know, we've just had the year in yellow uh, go out, which I don't know if any of you have seen it, but it was a really, really great documentary. Um, and... It was cinematic, and I think for us, if, if they're docs, they have to feel they have a, a cinematic a, a appeal. So there is, a, there is a broad range of things that you can bring. It's not just uh, formats and, and, and big fat tent ideas. Sure. Tom, finally from you. Yeah, I mean, I think it's slightly different for us in terms of how formed as a film your idea is when you come to us. I mean, if it's a good journalistic story, um, but you're not quite sure how that will turn into a piece of television, you know, come to us with it anyway because you know we can help you with that um, I would also echo what was said about making sure you've watched The Strand I mean we've had I had somebody pitch me um, the other day on a Monday we had a film going out that night about school food and they pitched me a great long thing about how we should do a film about school food <laughs> having, having read obviously read the piece in the mail that was accompanying our film and all got to the end where it says watch dispatches tonight so I said well that's great you're in the right area but you have to wait a couple of years to do that um, so it's, it is astonishing the number of people who come in who haven't actually seen dispatches you know in the last three months or whatever um, there is a limit to the comments on, on it, though. There, there's a guy who actually echoing um, what you said about uh, really experienced producers. There's a guy who pitches weekly, and each of his emails starts with a comment on the previous night's dispatches. <laughs> <laughs> and none of them have been positive. <laughs> <laughs> Beginning not to want to commission anything. <laughs> <in his pitch. laughs> yeah. You can be critical, but there's a limit. You know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So that's how not to win yeah, a pitch, yeah. basically. I just actually wanted to clarify, um, we are very much about long-running returnable series because we're in the digital space. We push, do a marketing push for the first in any series and then we just have to rely on viewers coming back and back and back. So we do have a few one-off film special slots, but really this is about the rollout big order formats.